beautiful 62 degree day. A matchup of two outstanding running backs, Eric Dickerson, on his way to a host of NFL rookie records, hoping to lead the Rams to the NFL West title. While Tony Collins looks to surpass the 1,000 yard mark and lead the Patriots to a wild card playoff spot. So today, at Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California, it's the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams. Today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. Quality products from the new Chrysler technology. By Sears, where you'll find great values. There's more for your life at Sears. And by Sylvania Superset Color TV and the complete line of Sylvania Home Entertainment Products. And we welcome you to Anaheim Stadium. Hi, everybody. Marv Alvin along with John Brody. And, John, this is a big ball game for both clubs, particularly the Patriots vying for a wild card berth. And the Patriots, a club that has managed only 10 points the last three games. And you always look to the quarterback when there's only been 10, 10 points scored. But I really think that in this case, it's a matter of them not giving him an opportunity to do the things he does best. On a, on a crummy field last week back there in Foxborough, seven points was enough. Today it may take 35, and I think if I was the Patriot uh, structure, I'd say, hey, let's give it to Tony and see what he can do, and I think they will. All right, and the L.A. Rams are vying for top spot in the NFC West, and they come off an upset at the hands of the Philadelphia Eagles last week. Well, they started so fast, and everything looked like it was nothing but a cakewalk uh, with Eric Dickerson playing the way he did, and he's got to play well today because they'd love to control the line of scrimmage they have the ability to do so. They're a big, strong team. But this is a big game for a team that really didn't know if it would be in this position when the season started. And Coach John Robinson has had a very low-key week. He feels no overkill. Did not want to overemphasize the ball game today. And I don't blame him because he's a man that knows what these kind of games are like late in the season. Eric Dickerson has played 18 ball games. That's six more than he has ever played in one season before. He knows this is a big ball game. He's a little bit tired. I don't I think anybody would be, Marv, but uh, you can look for Eric Dickerson to be the man. Vinny will come on if Eric doesn't uh, run the tempo of the game. And uh, really, they're very healthy and they're very strong and they're loving playing at home. And the New England Patriots, coached by this man, Ron Meyer, second year with New England, 5-4 and four last season, made it to the playoffs, turning it around out of Westerville, Ohio. Went to Purdue as a walk-on, ended up leading the club in minutes played, and has had great success as a head coach wherever he's been, Nevada, Las Vegas, and SMU, where he coached a fellow by the name of Eric Dickerson. All right, the... L.A. Rams will be kicking off and a look at Mike Lansford, who just recently replaced rookie Chuck Nelson. And we are underway at Anaheim. This is Ricky Smith. Across the 25-yard line, good coverage by the Rams. 10-yard return by Smith, who last week opened up with a 53-yard return. And that led to the only touchdown of the game in that 7-0 win over New Orleans. And there's the rookie, Tony Eason, and quarterback along with Tony Collins and the veteran, Mark Van Egan. The receivers, Stanley Morgan, Cedric Jones, and the tight end, Lynn Dawson. And starting at center, a surprise, White Wheeler, Pete Brock, took himself out of the lineup. He had made it back from a, a torn cartilage injury, but Wheeler is back, starting at center. And this is Collins for short pickup. Tony Collins coming off only 19 yards and eight carries last week in the snow. The big guy was Mosi Tatupu, who had quite a ball game. And the defensive unit of the Los Angeles Rams, the veteran Jack Youngblood, his 186th consecutive game. Uh, the linebackers, Jim Collins taking over as the starter over Jim Youngblood. And in the uh, secondary, a look at Harris, Johnson, Cromwell, and Irvin. Second and eight, and Eason to throw. Intended for Stanley Morgan. Covered by the linebacker, Carl Eckern. And Mel Owen got in between the uh, the play, and Carl had a very easy job of it. That's the sort of thing I would expect you to, to see a little bit more of on first down. Uh, throw the ball around the infield. He had his man open. They ran a good pattern. Had plenty of time to throw and couldn't get it there. New England coming in at 7-7. Seven and seven. Last week, keeping the playoff hopes alive by beating the Saints in the snow and the rain. 
Robert Weathers now in at running back. Third down play. And Easton in trouble. George Andrews, number 52 in his fifth season out of Nebraska. The outside linebacker on the right getting to the quarterback. It looks like the philosophy is get to Eason early, try to rattle the young quarterback, send your send your linebackers to do it because the three-man line doesn't provide a very good pass rush. Andrews got there in plenty of time. So here is Rich Camarillo, not only leading the NFL in net punting average, but also tops in the AFC, getting the ball inside the 20 uh, this season. But this time he is uh, well back, kicking from his six. And this is Henry Ellard, back at the 31. Ellard looking for the circle route. And Ellard across the 45-yard line, a nice uh, return. Clayton Wysoon able to force him out a 48-yard punt and a 17-yard return. Good block by James McDonald, a backup tight end as we look at the Los Angeles Rams. Vince Maragamo. And, of course, the key guy, as you saw, Eric Dickerson. There are the receivers. And the offensive line, Doug Smith missed a couple of games with a uh, broken bone in his right hand. In fact, he's been snapping with his left hand. And there are very few centers who can get a cast on one arm and snap that ball uh, with the other. I mean, it just takes a little more talent than to do that, but he seems to have done it effectively. First down at midfield. And Ferragamo to put it up. Mike Coleman. Picked up seven on the play. Ray Claiborne, the right cornerback, forced him out. And a look at the New England defensive unit. Ken Sims back in the starting lineup last couple of weeks. The old pro Julius Adams. Andre Tippett is back, uh, making it back from the, the ankle sprain suffered two weeks ago in a game against the Jets. And uh, the secondary has stayed away from injury. The one rookie in white, Ronnie Lippett. This whole group has played very consistently over the past 10 weeks. They need a little help. They need to get a few turnovers. They need to get some special team uh, big plays and some offense. And a gift to Dickerson. And he has the first down. Eric Dickerson stopped by Steve Nelson. Dickerson missed several days in practice this week, suffering with the flu. Comes off 103 yards against Philadelphia last week. His ninth 100-yard rushing game that ties the rookie record set by George Rogers back in 81. I like the philosophy of John Robinson. He doesn't get anyone too uptight around him. He knows this is a very big game for the Rams, and yet he, he took a very low-key approach to the whole week of practice, Eric Dickerson being one uh, example of that, not even running any plays for two of the four days of practice. So it looks like he's ready now. And it's a first down, picked up by Dickerson at the New England 37. And the completion to the tight end, Mike Barber. Inside the 30, Clayton Wysoon on the stop. And this fellow having an excellent year, 51, make it now 52 receptions on the season. Well, he loved it coming out to, uh, to Los Angeles from Houston. He was a bit vocal in his uh, disapproval of uh, being... Being beaten out by David Castor, who is now up in Minnesota when uh, he got traded to Houston. And, and since Mike has come out here, he's been uh, very instrumental in their success. Mike Barber had six solid seasons as a key man in the, uh, the glory years of the Houston Oilers. Second out and two. And it's Dickerson and the Patriots all over him. Andre Tippett on the tackle. You know, their linebacking has been outstanding this year. Even when Steve Nelson went down, they filled in very well with Rembert and Wysoon. This is an indication of Donnie Blackman, uh, number 55 on the outside. That one also Andre Tippett. They've just got five or six very solid linebackers. And the linebackers surrounding Dickerson, setting it back to a third down and three across the 30-yard line. We are just underway. Anaheim, California, Marv Albert, John Brody, Rams and Patriots, no score. And Ferragamo over the middle. Mike Barber fumbles, and the Patriots recover. 
The strong safety, Roland James, on the recovery. Roland James having an outstanding year. Uh, he's the man that creates so many turnovers when they do happen. You can see that the linebacker had this play covered. Barber comes up with an excellent reception. Vinny puts the ball the only place it can be thrown. Steve Nelson, he gets run by, but here comes Andre Tippett. Forces the fumble, picked up by Roland James, and they've got a break. First quarter, no score on the fumble recovery by the strong safety, Roland James. The New England Patriots take over inside their 20-yard line. And Eason to throw on first down, a bullet. Tony Collins on the reception, hit immediately by Carl Ecker and Owen Cromwell. And I tell you what, on first down, it's a little bit easier to pass protect. We know the Rams have a good pass rush. There's a replacement at, in the offensive line, Dwight Wheeler, number 62, starting at center for Pete Brock. It's a very big job for him. He's going to get occasional help from his left guard or right guard. This time, uh, Charlie Hanna, as the case may be, or John Hanna. But the quarterback needs time. Throwing on first down gives it to him. And he picked up six, second down and four. Stanley Morgan out to the top of your screen as they line up in the eye. That's starring in motion. And this is Collins looking for the hole, but tripped up. Eric Harris, the left quarterback, coming up to make the stop. Okay, Tony Collins has been a very effective runner, but they've been shut down, and he's been shut down of late. And it's pretty tough when you run from the eye formation if you don't throw a lot from it. They haven't done so, and as a result, I get the feeling they've got eight men on the line of scrimmage when Tony's back there in the eye. Tony got off to the fast start, recently has had his difficulties. Did not do it in the snow and the rain uh, last week. Third down and six. And Eason throwing sideline, incomplete intended for Stanley Morgan. Uh, George Andrews has made two big plays early in this ball game. This time he got right in the line of flight from Tony Eason. And when you take a wide angle, you can see number 52 right in the middle of your screen going toward the outside right side line gets in, in between Eason and his receiver. When that happens, there's no chance for a completion force the ball thrown high. And here is Rich Camarillo enjoying a homecoming today from nearby Pico Rivera, California, has a hundred friends and relatives. Uh, <laughs> and you know, he's having such a great year. The problem is when your punters looks like he's having the best year on your team, your group's in trouble. <laughs> and off the high snap, a line drive. And this is Henry Eller, the rookie from Fresno State. Beautiful shake and bake by Eller. And the ankle tackle hauled him down. It was Dwight Wheeler getting downfield. I think uh, Ellard has made about 80 yards, but all of it's been lateral on the last two punt returns. What he's trying to do is find a little lane, which is clear over on the right side. The punter has fooled the defensive uh, punt return team both times by kicking away from the return. And it makes it tough that way. Rams first down at their 42-yard line, following the 45-yard punt by Camarillo, 11-yard return by Ellard. And Ferragamo hands it off. This is Dickerson with a big hole. Dickerson to midfield. Clayton Wysu, New England's leading tackler, on the stop. It looks so good when you take a simple offensive line. Uh, in the, in the, the blocks are very simple, but what they try to do is spread everything laterally, let Eric pick whatever hole develops as the three offensive linemen get a piece of whoever's in front of them. They've been doing running this play all year, and it's a very difficult play to stop when you have a back uh, with the ability of a Dickerson. He just picks a hole, and when he does, he makes a decision so well that he gets up in there so fast, he's hard to, to stop for less than five or six. Picked up eight, third down. Uh, make it second down and two at the 50. And the first down is uh, picked up as Wysoon is able to cover up. So Eric Dickerson with his fourth carry of the day. And we'll check the scoreboard. Well, Houston upsetting Cleveland 34 to 27. Little, little stimulation for the Pats. I mean, they know there's two... Two uh, wild cards with five to go. Buffalo getting beat by San Francisco. That puts two teams back. 
So uh, a very realistic chance for the Patriots to do some good. Chicago coming on, beating Minnesota in the final. They're playing pretty well toward the end and still have a chance. Now the San Francisco win put some pressure here on the Rams. First down at the 46. Play action and Ferragamo throwing the home run ball. And nearly picked off. Intended receiver was Preston Denard, and Ray Claiborne step for step. You yeah, know, it's it's one of these plays that you, you see these defensive backs, you wonder how important they are. Watch Ray Claiborne, just an outstanding job. The man on closest down to this sideline, it's a it's a race all the way. Claiborne get, does not let Denard get on the inside. He gets on the inside, moves on the ball perfectly. It obviously the, there's a little bumping and shoving, but it isn't it isn't Claiborne's fault. It's a perfect way to see that. A man can play defense and really have a chance to get an interception. That was that was a very well played uh, play. Second down, second and ten at the 46. Vince Ferragamo in his sixth season out of Nebraska has not taken snaps in practice the last few weeks because of a uh, a cut on his ring finger. And that time picked up the first down and some more. Ferragamo to Farmer, but a flag throw. George Farmer in a second season out of Southern University. Yeah, but I don't, I, I know, I thought I saw one thrown myself, Mar, but I don't see it right now uh, so much, so often. Yeah, that penalty, that flag was picked up, put right. back in the pocket. Six points will remain on the board. Beautiful throw by Vinny. Uh, this is what people say he can do as well as anybody. Pick out an intended receiver, throw a beautiful spiral in between two defenders. Farmer gets up, catch, cradles the ball in his chest, and somehow ducks under Lippitt. Now it's just beautiful broken field running. He's got two offensive linemen that are Rams. Mike Barber down to help. Dennis Hara down to help. And he scores six. And it's his fifth touchdown of the season. Here is Mike Lansford, second-year man out of Washington. And the extra point is right through. So the Los Angeles Rams striking quickly. Take a 7-0 lead. Vince Ferragamo throwing his 22nd touchdown pass of the season, connecting with George Palmer. All right, Mike Lansford getting set to kick off. Ricky Smith is the deep man. That's Smith in his second year out of Alabama State. And Mike's got it up here. This is about his distance. He's an ideal kickoff man from the 50 because that penalty was tacked on. He kicks him high and short. <laughs> that, I, that's the first time I've ever seen a fair catch fair on catch. a kickoff. Cedric Jones, wide receiver, one of the up men calling for a fair catch at the 13-yard line. Let's get another look from a different angle at that uh, Farragamo to Farmer touchdown pass. Marv, what it does more than anything is it illustrates how the offensive team is after it. When you get a team that's hustling the way this one is early in the ball game, that George Farmer breaks loose. Now look at the help he gets. You see Mike Barber coming down to help. The other two are linemen. Okay, you see Smith coming right in. He's the center with a big cast on his arm. He's just not fast enough to help, but he's got two others out in front to do. That's why they got a touchdown. And back live, Patriots now first down at their 13. And Easton able to get it off. Derek Ramsey on the floating pass. Jack Youngblood on the tackle. And uh, they spot it at the 19-yard line. So a six-yard pickup, but it'll be a second and four. Four plays, 58 yards, capped off by Ferragamo, combining with Farmer and a 7-0 Ram lead. You know, the last play that uh, New England threw, a little screen pass to the tight end, that should be a good type of play for New England because they've got such a versatile and big, strong offensive line. They can do a lot of things that I don't think they've done. O.C. Takupu carrying for the first time today. And he has the first down. Johnny Johnson and Leroy Irvin out of the secondary making the stop on uh, Tatupu came up with the career high 128 yards last week not bad from uh, a guy who's played most of his football in sunshine he is from American Samoa yet he did it in the rain and the snow yeah. you know I think a lot of that's overrated they don't realize no matter how cold it is once you're in that huddle it gets pretty warm and all you have to do is get knocked backwards a few times 
and the heat changes. Well, the, the guys stand very close to each other. <laughs> this is Tatupu and a short pickup. Reggie Doss, the right defensive end, on the stop. You know, Marv, I mean, when you get knocked on your cracker, yes, I, your, I system, you. your system gets warm, and uh, that's what happens to all fullbacks. So no matter what the weather conditions, this man will be ready to play early. It'll be a second down and seven. Just looking for a uh, more extensive description from you. <laughs> Rams lead it, 7 nothing. Just under six left, first quarter. It's Tatupu again. Trying to pull away. He fumbled, but it was whistled dead. Ball is dead out at the 34-yard uh, line, so they will bring it back. Mel Owens told, get back yeah, to the he... line. All right, Mosi Tatupu, three carries, 15 yards. Cincinnati has defeated Detroit 17-9, and that's a, uh, a severe blow to the Detroit Lions. Well, they were ready to clinch the whole deal today, and it didn't work that way. Seattle coming on for a five-point victory over the Giants. And New Orleans kicking a field goal late to beat Philadelphia, who beat these same Rams last week. Uh, New or uh, Philly's playing a little tougher right now. It's a third down and four off the swing. Stanley Morgan is well covered, and a penalty flag down. Carl Eckhern all over Morgan, but a flag has been thrown. Referee is Red Cashin, along with the rest of his crew. And here is the call. It is against the Patriots. So it'll be Camarillo again. Fourth and seven. Twice it looked like uh, the Patriots had pretty good plays started. Coordination between offensive linemen and running backs seemed to break the play down. Illegal use of the hands by the defense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. He meant offense, and uh, that's the reason the penalty was declined. And they will punt. And here is Rich Camarillo back at his 17-yard line. As you see, number two man right behind Ron Stark of the Baltimore Colts. And he's averaged 46 and a half thus far today. This is third punt of the day. Henry Ellard, the single deep man back at the 25. And Ellard chasing. Good coverage by the Patriots. Ellard with the short return. Mark Van Eken all over him downfield. A 54-yard punt. Seven-yard return. 5-15 left first quarter. Rams on top seven. Our Eric Dickerson and the man who coached him in college, Ron Meyer. Ron made an appearance on a uh, talk show, a radio talk show in Boston, and they had arranged beforehand. Eric Dickerson, disguising his voice, uh, called up Meyer and said, what do you think of Eric Dickerson? And uh, Ron did say nice things that uh, should be uh, pointed out. All right, Bergamo has it batted down. So Vince throwing on first down. Andre Tippett uh, got a piece of it. Andre Tippett's made a few big plays. He's a very important cog in the Patriot defense. He's come on very fast, played well all year, got hurt against the Jets and had to sit out last week. But you can see this is a very difficult job to throw the ball over a man six foot five that extends himself the way Andre does and uh, that's the way you stop those short passes. Bergallo is now four for six 73 yards. He had 46 of the 73 on that touchdown pass to George Farmer. Second down and 10. That's got to be too much time isn't it? Yes it is. Delay of game against the Rams. Delay of the game by the offense. You know, that's one of those mistakes a quarterback very seldom makes, but you find you when, when they start a fast whistle, okay, and that one was pretty quick because everyone was close to the huddle, usually you think you've got a little more time to work with. That time the, the, I noticed the clock was started swiftly. Then he didn't take that much more time than he normally does, but he made a, he made a mistake by not... Offense, still second down. By not looking at the 30-second clock. And so now Ferragamo faces a second down and 15. The ball is back at the 17-yard line. And the Rams who go single back throughout with Dickerson. In a passing situation. 7-0. Ferragamo on the run. And he fumbles. And 
Let's see what the call is. Well, I'll be very surprised if they if they mark that as a fumble because he hit the ground. He was going for the ground, and it was the ground that removed the ball. I think he'll regroup. It'll be third down and one. Yes, they blow it dead. Eight-yard uh, pickup for Vince Ferragamo. This is a delayed blitz. Steve Nelson's coming late. Ferragamo cannot find a receiver open. He waits as long as he can. Finally, he finds a crack, which is a, a very nice thing to see. If you know you're in trouble, gets close to the first down. It'll be third and one. And the ball spotted at the 47-yard line. They actually have two backs, uh, Mike Gooman and uh, Eric Dickerson. It's Dickerson slashing for the first down. Steve Nelson on the tackle. You know, when you, you see a team, a quarterback loves to have a luxury. The luxury being you can always give it to your fullback and pick up a couple of yards. And the reason you can do that is because you've got an offensive line that plays football on the other side of the line of scrimmage. See, all those fannies are over the line of scrimmage. When you get when you get that happening, all the running backs in this league can pick up a first down. And that's what happened there. And that Ram offensive line, Bill Bain, Jackie Slater at the tackles, Kent Hill and uh, Dennis Hara at the guards, and Doug Smith. A six-year man out of Bowling Green at center. First down, midfield. And here's Dickerson. He tried to pick his way, and again, a short pickup. Johnny Rembert, the outstanding rookie out of Clemson, on the tackle. Just one of those, that outstanding rookie group uh, that they do have. The Patriots, remember, uh, got Sims and Lester Williams last year. It seemed to give them a resurgence. Lester Williams hasn't really had a very good year for the Patriots this year. Uh, but Sims is starting to play better, and their linebacking is really improved. Two minutes gone by in the second quarter. Dennis Owens has been the starter at nose tackle. Lester Williams has had an injury uh, hit season. Second down and seven. And here is Ferragamo. Lofting one. Mike Barber. Barber down in the 25 yard line free safety rick sanford got him down a 26 yard pass play not sure that we have it but steve nelson turned his back trying to get back in the area and in so doing he allowed mike barber to be wide open ferragam was trying to get way down the field with the ball but because because nelson has turned his back and gone after the wide receiver he leaves mike barber all alone you can see 57 trying to get into pursuit take a look at it once you turn your back you've committed yourself when you've done that, you leave a big gap. He did that. It's not the kind of play you see a real 10-year a great veteran do very often, but he did it. A lot of big play. You know our guys would have it. Harry Coyle and uh, David <laughs> Neal. Good show. First and 10, down at the 22-yard line. And here is Dickerson again. So the... Uh, the running game of Eric Dickerson has been to this point of the short yardage variety, but uh, Johnny Robinson looks to establish the running game first. He established that in the first week of the season when he, when he sprung number 29 on the rest of this league. He's got a chance to be the, the number one rookie rusher ever. He's needed 41 yards starting the ball game. I don't know if he's picked that up yet or not. But I think he's too short. What would you say? You think so? Yeah. Good point. <laughs> As we are flashed, he has 39 <laughs> yards. Unbelievable. The man has a calculator in his head. He's got it. And Dickerson has the first down and the rookie rushing record. Ray Claiborne. On the tackle, Eric Dickerson now has passed by George Rogers for rushing for the season. He now has 1678, and that is a new NFL rookie record. He reminds me so much of Chuck Muncie when he's running with the ball. He, this man is 230 pounds, and it looks like he's a fleet halfback. But when he gets the ball, he's got all the moves of a thin... Uh, uh, Back, but he's got the size of a, of a fullback, and it's just incredible how active he is. Third down. Apparently, he was just short of the first down. Third and one coming up at the uh, 13. And a timeout has been called. Four minutes gone by in the second quarter. The first quarter statistics of the big play, the 46-yard touchdown pass. Uh, Vince Ferragamo hooking up with George Farmer. It's been the difference. Neither team has consistently held on to the ball for any say, long period of time, but uh, the big plays do, as they do so often, uh, dictate the outcome. And it's a third down and one at the 13. 
And for Gummo, on the you. sneak. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful, and I know Vinny appreciates it deeply. But uh, John Robinson has never been one to underestimate the importance of an offensive line. He's got a group that plays football on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And when you do that, uh, he's got, he brought his line coach from USC, Hudson Houck, over, and they still, they say, fellas, it's your job to move people around, and they do. And it's an offensive line that has allowed only 18 sacks. Uh, that is low in the NFL. And Vinny is one who takes a little time throwing the ball, so that's, uh, that's a further credit. It is a first down picked up. On the sneak by uh, Ferragamo, the Los Angeles Rams have scored 67% of the time when they've been inside their opponent's 20-yard line uh, this season. And right now, they have a first down just outside the 11. But last week, they had the ball 29 times in scoring territory and uh, did not score a point. So uh, they did with the foot, but not with the with the football. Yes, they were upset by the Eagles. 13 to 9. Eagles winning on a touchdown pass with only 21 seconds left in regulation. Here is Dickerson. And he fumbled. It's recovered by the Patriots. Looks like he slipped and then he coughed it up. Roland James, who has had himself a terrific first half on the recovery. Dickerson, who did fumble last week, his first turnover since the third week of the season, yeah. has fumbled right here. Ironically, Marv, right at the same place on the field. Right inside the 10, looks like he's trying to make a cut to get a little a little bit extra, get him down to the five-yard line. When he does so, he slips, the ball slips, and New England has a first down and 10, just about the six-yard line, and they still are in this game. All right, John, an illustration of the uh, Patriot offense doing Zippo to this point. <laughs> That's the bottom line. And the Patriots now off the fumble by Dickerson take over at the six-yard line. Little movement. Yeah. Bob Kreider has his hands full trying to handle Jack Youngblood, and that happens so often when a guy knows he's got his hands full, he starts Ball a little start. early. Number 75 on the offense. And it's the right tackle, Kreider, just trying to get started a little bit early. He's trying to help his his group. Uh, some sometimes you help a little more by waiting a little bit longer. But let's let's uh, remember, Kreider. Number seventy-five, a... move too soon on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Kreider's done a good job on Young Blood so far. First down and 13 to go. This is Collins. And Collins gets it out of the danger area. Collins across the 10 yard line, stopped by Vince Newsom. All right, let's go to our studios in New York for an update. I'll review that in a moment. <laughs> All right, Van Egan stopped by Eckern out to the 20 yard line. And a first down picked up uh, by the Patriots. The wild card situation is so complicated, as uh, Len mentioned, the NFL has just determined. In other words, <laughs> they had a week without realizing it. There are so many possibilities, but they determined it, obviously, today uh, that uh, <laughs> okay. Denver could clinch it. Yes, sir. All right, first down at the 20-yard line. Here's Collins. So the Patriots trying to unleash Collins. Picked up a couple. Tony Collins stopped by the inside linebacker for the Rams, Jim Collins. Well, look, we, we mentioned Bob Kreider, number 75, trying to handle Jack Youngblood, who I think might be the best defensive end that's played this game over the longest period of time. 13 years, he's been playing top quality football for that whole period of time. He is such a good pursuer. You can't keep him out of the play. Kreider's got had his hands full, and he's done pretty well on him, as we mentioned earlier. Excellent article on uh, Youngblood of this week's Sports Illustrated, capturing the man very well. And Van Egan is captured by the Rams. Mel Owens, the outside linebacker. Jack Youngblood, at 33 years of age, doing it these days with savvy and physical conditioning. And making it back uh, this week after a bout with the flu. Well, we saw we saw Youngblood pursuing the play outside. This time he, he just keeps hustling, just keeps fighting, ends up running into the ball carrier. So it's a third down, third and ten at the 20-yard line. 
Youngblood has been the heart and soul of this uh, Rams uh, defensive unit. Robert Weathers. Weathers, the second-year man from Arizona State, hit out by Vince Newsom. That doesn't make sense to me. It's third down and 10 yards to go. They're seven points behind, and it's the same thing that they've been trying to do in the previous three weeks, and it's the reason they've scored 10 points. They have not had a go down the field. Well, if you, if you, if you talk to the fellas in the, in the blue and gold, they can't think of a better situation than, than to just line up and, and tackle the running game. If they don't give Eason a shot, there's no way they, they can win. You want them to open it up for Tony Eason. You know, the guy was at, New, at, at Illinois. He took them everywhere they went. He was an outstanding player. He's a first draft choice he may not be as good now as he will be in a couple years but he's good enough to win the ball game if they get people open all right Camarillo who has had a busy first half Henry Ellard nearly ran into his blocker look out a lot of mileage being put on by Ellard and he stepped out <laughs> so Ellard who earlier ran laterally this time with the circle route and loses five <laughs> on the play off the 43-yard punt by Camarillo. He's the best lateral return man I've ever seen. He can he can move laterally about as good as anybody with a ball. It's like when you're a punt returner, I asked Bruce Taylor what you feel like, the old punt returner for the 49ers. He said like a trapped rat. Right. Well, this is a pretty good illustration of what he must have thought. So Henry Eller, a second round draft pick, a rookie out of Fresno State, providing some action but going the wrong way. Eason, who we saw in preseason, looking very impressive, but of course, uh, preseason is not regular season. Nobody was throwing the ball down the field. All right, first down, Rams back to the 26-yard line. A bullet thrown by uh, Ferragamo, completing to Mike Gooman, Johnny Rembert. On the stop, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KTTC Television 10, Rochester. Along with John Brody, Marv Albert from Anaheim Stadium, Anaheim, California, and what has developed into a bright, sunny day. Temperature in the 60s, and the L.A. Rams in front of the New England Patriots by the score of 7-0. 46-yard touchdown pass play for a gummo to the wide receiver George Farmer in the first quarter, and that has been it. Second down and seven for the Rams. The swing, and again it's Gooman. And he's trapped back behind the line. Roland James right there. Roland James made a fine play, but uh, Steve Nelson did not turn his back that time, and as a result was in pursuit swiftly. The time before, we saw him jump back into the lane. He's trying, trying to get in his passing lane, but he's not going to let that head go back and, and put it on the wide receiver. He comes out trying to help. If the man got away, he'd have been there. Mike Gooman is called the U-back in the uh, Johnny Robinson. <laughs> well, well, that mean? You'll explain that, the John, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, that's XYZ, right. U, V, W, X, Y, Z, something like that. That means it's Eric Dickerson and everybody else. Third down, 13. Nice catch, but short of the first down. Preston Denard, covered by Roland James, but the Rams come up short. Well, he came off to a receiver he didn't want to come off to because the secondary had everyone covered. He's going to come off to Denard if he can't get to somebody down the field, but there was a mix-up right in the middle of the field. It took Mike Barber so long to get into his pattern, he had to come off to Denard. When he did so, it was... Stop short of the first down. I'll tell you, Roland James looked like a rodeo. And Roland uh, has had a very fine first half. John Misko now running from inside his 20-yard line. Ricky Smith is back. And there's the line drive played by Smith, the high hop, back at the 25. Across the 30-yard line, Ricky Smith, second-year man out of Alabama State, Put down by Mark Giroux, so a 42-yard punt with the hop and a six-yard return. A timeout is called. We'll be back in a moment. To this point, the matchup of two of the better running backs in the National Football League has been low-key, but uh, both can explode at any time, particularly Eric Dickerson. And the Patriots now taking over with just under five minutes remaining in this first half. Patriots first down across the 30-yard line. And Eason throwing on first down. Stanley Morgan fumbling. And the Rams will take over. Johnny Johnson.
Johnson. Four-year man out of Texas, number 20. You'll see Johnson on the recovery. Yeah, well, he's fortunate. I think this is a good call. He threw the ball right where it should have been thrown. Stanley Morgan did not grab it well enough. He's got a, a first down certain. It's got given their offense a chance to get regrouped, get down the field, and it would have been at midfield as a result. When you drop a ball like that, uh, things, are just, things are just going the wrong way for you. Johnny Johnson taking over at left quarterback for Eric Harris, who left earlier because of an ankle injury. And the Rams take over at the Patriot 47-yard line. Four and a half left first half. Rams seven. And the Patriots nothing. Dickerson the lone deep back. Here's Dickerson. So Dickerson has not been able to break one. Andre Tippett's right there. And apparently he coughed it up. Well, they should have. And you know who made the play? It was Roland James, who, even though Tippett came up with the ball, Roland James came from his strong safety position, came up and hit Dickerson right on the ball. And that's the toughest place. You can't see him sometimes when you're caught in the pack. Here he goes. It looks like he's breaking free right now. You'll see something come up right there. That's Roland James. Beautiful hit. Forced the ball loose. The Patriots recover. So Dickerson has now fumbled on his last two carries, and that's three the last two games. And the Rams cough it right back to the Patriots. Hey, Washington leading Dallas in the second quarter. Yeah, they sure are. I didn't know anybody was watching that. Yeah, no. And Baltimore over Denver, 9-0 in the second. Baltimore's ruined a lot of people's year, uh, particularly the Patriots. Yes. The Raiders just carrying on their normal operation. My first out of the 42. Here's Collins. So Collins on the uh, stutter step. How about this uh, for time of possession? The last two times that the New England L.A. had the ball. Uh, New England eight seconds and the fumble. And uh, L.A. seven seconds and the fumble by Dickerson. Yeah, one play apiece. And right now second down and eight. At the 44-yard uh, line, Ram 7, Patriots nothing. In the first quarter, Ferragamo and Farmer for 46 yards, and that has been it. We're just under four minutes left in the first half. Play action. And Eason able to complete Stanley Morgan for the first down of some more. Hard pickup on that pass play. Stanley Morgan run out by Eric Harris, who is back at uh, left corner after suffering the ankle injury. And the first down for Eason, and again he hits Morgan. So Morgan for another first down inside the 30, Leroy Irvin on that, the coverage. That is a beautiful throw, and I'll tell you why. He talked to any, any wide receiver, he'll say you can't throw it any better than that because he didn't leave him up for grabs. He threw the ball low enough so that when you make your turn into the middle, you're not going to get caught by the strong or free safety coming in to make the play. He threw it down where you could catch the ball, make the reception, pick up the first down, and go back to the huddle. And Morgan with his third reception of the day. First down at the L.A. 28-yard line as they run out of the eye. Short set for Eason. Try to duck under, but that's sack number three by the Rams. Jack Youngblood, the first to get to Eason. Okay, Jack Youngblood's going to get to Eason a lot if he has to hold the ball that long. What's, what you do look for in a quarterback is a man that doesn't panic. This guy has really got a cold beat. He stays there. He hangs in as long as he does. When the whole, when the bridge caves in, he takes his loss and goes back to the huddle. That's the way he was accustomed to playing when he was in college. He loves to go back two out of three times throwing the ball around the infield. Now he'll come back again and fire it. He's thrown three or four balls in a row. I think he's ready. So it's a second down and 17 back at the 34. Youngblood now eight and a half sacks on the season. Eason throwing one. Beautiful toss. Now, how good was that one, Marv? Was that all right? Clarence Weathers for the first down and more. 22-yard pickup. Eric Harris ran him out. And, yes, Eason, as you say, is throwing it around the infield. Well, what he did is he came back there. He hung in to the last possible second. But then he had to get out of there. He broke free. And when he did break free, he forced the linebackers to get in pursuit of him. Those three fellas that are in that area, they had to come up, put on a standstill. He put the ball over their heads, put it right where it had to be thrown. They got a first down inside the 10. Let's take a look. at. Now, the reason this play works is because he goes back in the pocket and he stays there. He stays there until something breaks down, and then he scoots out. And when he scoots out, somebody comes open, and he hits him on the run. 
And he hit the rookie from Delaware State, Clarence Weathers. A timeout has been called when we return. Patriots first and goal at the eight. Just under two minutes left, first half. The Patriots trailing the Rams 7-0. They have a first and goal at the eight-yard line. And the rookie quarterback, Tony Eason, has uh, sparked him on this drive. Osi Tatupu. Stopped by Reggie Das. Perfect play for Mo. This is a perfect place for Mosi. He is one of those kind of fellas that can find an extra yard when you need one. Now, they've got the kind of team that should be real good in short yardage situations. A big, strong offensive line, a tight end in Lynn Dawson, who's a good blocker, big. Uh, they should be able to move it down the field. Now, this is a Patriot club that has scored only one touchdown in the last 14 quarters. Here is Tatupu again. And Tatupu takes in. So the Patriots on the board. Their first touchdown in a long time. Well, it's the first touchdown since in about uh, nine or ten quarters since we've been watching, Marv. As we saw them play Baltimore, they forgot to score then. They didn't score against the Jets. They scored seven points early last week. And this man was responsible for that drive and also a good part of this one. Bosi Tatupu, who played for John Robinson at Southern Cal, able to bring the Patriots within one. And now the NFL debut of the Patriots' latest kicker, Joaquin Zendejas, out of Laverne College here in California. And he puts it right through. And Joaquin, like punter Rich Camarillo, has a lot of folks uh, in the stands. He's from Chino, California. He was signed this week after suitcase Fred Steinfort, who uh, missed three field goals last week, was dropped. Steinfort had replaced John Smith. Joaquin, a member of the uh, kicking Zendejas family. And yeah. he has his first point in the NFL. You know... Mosey did a little work that time, and I, I've got to say that of all the players that have played for the New England Patriots in the in the last uh, few years, Mosey Tatupu might be the number one guy that comes up with a big play at the right time. And we got a little song for you because uh, as yes. we as we watch him go through the uh, the exploits of getting into the end zone. got a little free time up there in New England. <laughs> that's uh, that's real swell. Who, who is that? Uh, who's that on the, what group like is that? I don't know, but they got the right guy. Apparently they uh, put that together up in uh, New England. Uh, mostly a popular guy. A song that will not uh, be seen on the charts. Uh, Barry Redden <laughs> on the return, a 16-yard return. And it's, uh, yes, Mosi Tatupu on the tackle. All right, we're told that was Bruce and the bench warmers from WHDH in Boston. Well, they're good, but we're going to have to send them back there for the rest of the afternoon. All right, so the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams are now tied at 7, a minute 12 remaining in this first half. And the Rams first down at the 26. Ferragamo off the pump. Here's Eric Dickerson. 35. And cuts up to the 40-yard line. Lester Williams, the nose tackle on the stop. 14-yard play. Beautiful play by Vin. He comes back, he looks down the field, never gives the screen away, lets everybody get on top of him, then all of a sudden comes out late to Dickerson. He's got Dennis Harris leading him. Only a great back would have made a first down on the play, but he did. And back live, Ferragamo going sideline. The diving attempt by Preston Denard. And it is ruled a completed pass. A first down, down to 35 seconds, and a timeout has been called. They were just a little late getting that timeout called, and you'll notice Dennis Hara hurried over to the official trying to get it done. And uh, the, anybody can call timeout now, but nobody seemed to do it quick enough. 15-yard pass play. It'll be a first down for the Rams at the Patriot 45-yard line. Vince Ferragamo over at the sideline. John Robinson feels that uh, Ferragamo 
has been more efficient uh, looking to get him to throw it short throw it away upon occasion instead of always looking deep well I don't think he uh, you know I, I've never understood what anybody ever takes a look at Vince Ferragamo for on a negative side because the only time I've ever seen him play it's been against the 49ers and he's had the best games of anybody any quarterback that they play against then I've seen him on isolated instances uh, Monday night for him he always has a good game so they say he's up and down I've just never seen him have any other than a, than a top flight performance Last week, they lost, but he still played well. You know, uh, I think he can get it done. Well, of course, you're watching selected Vince Farragamo games. <laughs> I mean, come on, John. He has other ball games. He plays when you don't see him. That's true. It's a first down at the 45-yard line, 35 seconds remaining. And Farragamo going sideline. George Fava was crunched. 15-yard pickup again. They're in the hurry up. You see the clock running down. Ronnie Lippett on the tackle. And we're down to 15 seconds remaining of the half. Penalty flag thrown, and now the clock is stopped. They've got one timeout left, and he didn't want to use it at that time. They'll take the five-yard penalty. They've still got a timeout left. They have to get the ball realistically down inside the 30-yard line because they've got a, a fellow that's a pretty accurate kicker in Mike Lansford, but not an exceptionally long one. So too early. Number 72 on the offense. Still first down. That's the left guard, Kent Hill, for setting up too early. Uh, that... That setting up too early is fine. What it meant is he got off the line of scrimmage and set up in his pass protection position. Uh, <laughs> it didn't mean he got to the line of scrimmage too quick. All right, coming up at halftime, a look at what is going on around the National Football League. Len Berman back out of studios uh, in New York. First down, 15 at the 35-yard line. And Ferragamo with time, under through. Intended for the tight end, Mike Barber, covered by Clayton Wysoon, and we're down to nine seconds remaining in the half. It's time for him to throw one ball of at least uh, six yards in depth. If he can do that, he's really giving his place kicker a chance to make three points, and I think you ought to keep that in consideration right now because even though they do have one timeout, he can throw it anywhere in the middle of the field. No play will take nine seconds if he is ready when the ball hits the ground to call a timeout. We see Mike Lansford. Uh, he probably feels the same way. Let's that, see what he does. Lansford is uh, four for four inside the 40-yard line. Second down and 15. And Ferragamo going sideline, but again under throws. George Farmer. That was so quick, he may have time to do it again. They said this is third down, but they're still going to send in the, the place kicking team, and I, I I feel that it's a little bit too long. It'll be 53 yards in length. Uh, he doesn't get any any help from the wind here, and it will be his first long range attempt on the season. He's five for seven. He was activated two games back, replacing the rookie Chuck Nelson, who is still on the roster. Chuck missed uh, four extra points and uh, was kicking off short. Lansford did hit from 49 yards away, and uh, this one in the area of 52, 53 yards. Nolan Cromwell puts it down, and here it is. It is short, just short. So the 52-yard attempt comes up short, and we see one second remaining. One second on the scoreboard clock. Taking a look at the at the first half of play, Marv, in a game that's so important for both teams, uh, New England really got off to a rather shaky start. It looked like Vinny was going to throw him right out of the stadium, and uh, then they came on. Their defense held him in the game for a long enough period of time to where uh, somehow they gave Easton a chance to throw the ball down the field a little bit. He was effective. They've tied the game, and uh, I think we can look forward to an offensive show in the second half. And this is an important game for both clubs. San Francisco 49ers already in the win column, so they're a half game in front of the L.A. Rams in the battle for the uh, NFC West. Patriots battling for a wild card position. This first half comes to a close. So here in Anaheim, the Los
Los Angeles Rams and the New England Patriots are tied at seven. And we'll have our halftime activities in just a moment. Stay tuned for NFL 83 after these messages. And he shows you what a good athlete can do once he does pick off an interception. 40-yard return. Donnie Blackman, one of the outstanding young linebackers. That was his first interception of the year, and he made the most of it. And it's a first and goal at the six for the Patriots. This is Tatupu. Picked up a yard on the play, so mostly the uh, short yardage specialist stopped by inside linebacker Carl Ecker. He, he created that yard because that he tried the same play he scored on. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. We noticed that Eason is 8 for 13, throwing the ball, most of that coming late in the second quarter. Vinny's stats were 11 for 17. The turnovers, 3 for, for the Rams, 2 for the Patriots. Everything was pretty even, but this big break may have turned the ball game. And this was turnover number 4, the intercept by the linebacker Blackman. Here's Tatupu, and he's in! The Patriots now lead the Rams by the score of 13 to 7. Mosi Tatupu coming off the career high 128 yards last week scores his second touchdown of the day. I just this man can can get that short yardage with anybody in the league right now. Cut real small, big legs, strong running back. Third touchdown in two games for him. Boy, that's important down there. When you get a big turnover, get it inside the 10 and take two plays to run it in against the Rams, your group is moving. And he has four touchdowns on the season. Now the point after by the rookies and Dejas. Eason puts it down. And the Patriots now lead the Rams by the score of 14 to 7. The Snowin Samoan coming off his effort in the snow last week against New Orleans, bringing it home for the second time this afternoon. And it's now the Rams forced to come from behind against the underdog. Joaquin Zendejas getting set to kick off. Here's Henry Ellard. And yes, turnovers have really hurt the Los Angeles Rams. Well, the interception by Blackman setting up the short drive, and Satupu able to bring it home. Here's Ellen, 10 yard line, out to the 20. And gets up near the 25, a 22 yard return. And he's hauled out by Paul Dombrowski. Today's game is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? by RCA, maker of innovative video products that will open your eyes. And by Visa Cards and Traveler's Checks. You can do it. We'd like to help. Marv Albert with John Brody. And now an overcast day in Anaheim, California. The Rams trailing the Patriots 14 to seven. Eric Dickerson has fumbled twice. And the handoff for Dickerson and the Patriots all over him again. Well, yeah, it's one thing to uh, get tackled by a, by a linebacker, but Dennis Owens, I believe, made that tackle. He is the nose tackle when you get that sort of penetration. And he just ran over the top of Doug Smith that time. Now everybody's starting to get in on the act. And it's a loss of three. It'll be a second down and 13 back at the uh, 22. There's another quickie drive capped off by the run by uh, Tatupu. They and can't be too quick if you're an offensive man. Dickerson now with that loss. 48 yards, 15 carries, so he has been held in check. Here is Dickerson, and again, uh, Patriots do the job. This time, Clayton Wysoon, the inside linebacker on the stop. Patriots have Sims, Owens, and Adams up front. Tippett, Nelson, Wysoon, and Blackman, the linebackers, and in the secondary, Lippett, James, Sanford, and Claiborne. It'll be a third down and 10 at the 25. Los Angeles Rams, eight up, six down. Last Sunday, they were beaten, upset by the Eagles. 13-9, Eagles doing it on a touchdown pass with only 21 seconds left. This after the Rams walloped Buffalo the previous week. Aragano throws the middle and deflected. Preston Denard, the intended receiver. And you saw Rick Sanford have a shot at it. Look, you know, we showed you a lot of a lot of wide shots early 
Well, now we don't have to. You can get a little more specific. He's trying to throw the ball underneath and around those linebackers. Donnie Blackman just makes an outstanding play. You see how quickly he reads his assignment. Then he jumps on Denard. When he does so, he takes the lane away. There's no way you're going to throw the ball in there and complete it. And now John Misko is back at his 10-yard line. Ricky Smith awaiting the punt. Smith inside the 30. And Smith gets up near the 40-yard line. Ricky Smith has been running hot and cold and catching the ball, doing the job here today. 10-yard return off the 46-yard punt. And when we return, New England will take over. Stanley Morgan, the intended receiver, and Eric Harris had a beat on it. Well, you just won't find a cornerback with a more golden opportunity than Eric Harris had. You generally, when they throw in front of you for a while, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait. Now you just see it. You break on the throw. He's got it perfectly timed. He's coming right in front. Starring has, it looks like Stanley Morgan out there, tripped. Trying to, trying to make a play back to the ball. He saw the problem. Second and ten. Harris should have had it. He's picked off four this year. Two and one game against Buffalo. Two weeks back. Second down play for Eason and airing one out. Firing deep and overthrows. Intended for Morgan. And he was covered by Leroy Irvin. That's okay. I don't see that, you know, Morgan normally is going to beat any cornerback when he's one-on-one. -on -one. So what Eason did is he got the free safety out of the area. When you watch Stanley Morgan cut to the inside on, on Irvin, what he does is he's got a lot of room to throw that ball into the inside. He didn't make an exceptional throw. He threw it too long, and he threw it too far outside. So here are the Patriots on a third down play, and they are 0 for 5 in third down situations. They lead it by the score of 14-7. Third down play back at the New England 40-yard line. They get back to the And Eason again firing the long ball. And broken up. Harris got a piece of it intended for Cedric Jones. But if anybody wondered whether Tony Eason could fire the ball deep, they found out because that ball went some 55 yards in the air and he found the right guy to throw it to. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation. Cedric just did not beat Eric Harris deep. I think it's a good call. We discussed and criticized the fact they weren't letting him throw the ball around the infield. Well, they're doing so in the second half. He has made a beautiful throw. It's just a better defensive play by Harris. Cedric Jones, third-round draft pick a year ago out of Duke University. He is a burner. And now here is Rich Camarillo the pride of nearby uh, Pico Rivera, California. <laughs> You've got him today, Jim. And this is Johnny Johnson. Able to break a couple of tackles. But stopped by Paul Dombrowski. 46-yard punt by Camarillo, who has been superb. And a seven-yard return by Johnson. So the Rams will go to the offense when we come back after this. Time you can see the disappointment on Vinny's face, but you can't throw if you can't get a good grip on the ball. And he's been throwing uh, over and through adversity throughout the past couple of weeks. Now they've got Jeff Kemp in there. He didn't have a bad day, one unfortunate turnover, but I know it's just eating his heart out not to be back. Jeff Kemp in his third season out of Dartmouth took over for Ferragamo early in the year against Washington. Penalty markers are down. Dickerson on the carry, stopped by a Blackman. And we're told they have applied a numbing agent on the uh, hand of Vince Ferragamo. They will keep him out one series and then check it out. Yeah, if, if you put a numbing Offside, agent. Number 81 of the offense. Penalty is declined. Check it out. And the problem is when you put a numbing agent on a thrower's hand, you oftentimes numb all the touch and all the ability that he comes into the ball game with. So they know it's very dangerous, but they also know it's the only chance. So they'll see after one series whether he's able to play or whether he's not. Jeff Kemp, the son of a pretty fair quarterback by the name of Jack Kemp, now a United States congressman. Looking to throw for the first time today, and he's able to complete David Hill. Out to the 25, the strong safety, Roland James, combining with uh, Steve Nelson, the inside linebacker, on the stop. So Kemp on the season is now 5 for 13. He took over against uh, 
the Redskins in the Redskin romp over L.A. earlier this season. He was signed as a free agent prior to 1981, signed in training camp. I think if uh, genetics have anything to do with it, uh, Jeff Kemp is looking, he's loving this right now. This is an opportunity to do something. It's the first chance he's had all year to help his team, and uh, I don't think he's overawed by it. As the third down and five, four minutes gone by in this third quarter, Rams lead 14-7, Dickerson on the stutter step, across the 30, and picks up the first down. Power move to get the first down, Andre Tippett on the stop. Okay, it's been very difficult running the ball inside all day long because of Steve Nelson, number 57, and number 53, Clayton Wysoon. Now, these two have excellent pursuit, but sometimes when you have excellent pursuit, you get caught moving too swiftly. That time, Eric Dickerson moved behind them, took advantage of their pursuit, and picked up the first down. So, 58 yards, 18 carries for Dickerson. On that front line for the Patriots, Toby Williams, Dennis Owens, and Julius Adams. We mentioned Ken Sims earlier in running down the lineup, but uh, he has been out of action because of a back problem. So Toby Williams in there. Nice catch. So Kemp able to complete to Henry Ellard. And another first down. An 18-yard advance. Ronnie Lippett on the tackle. And here's Kemp coming on and looking impressive. Right here, let's go to an update. First down for the Los Angeles Rams at their 49-yard line. Jeff Kemp has taken over for Vince Ferragamo. And this is Barry Redden. Barry Redden. So Redden with a rare carry stopped by the veteran Julius Adams. You're seeing situation defense. And uh, right now, the, the New England Patriots expect the Rams to run the ball. And so what has Jeff done? He's thrown the ball effectively to the outside. The linebackers aren't helping to the outside. It's the first time the cornerbacks have been playing the wide receivers off the, off the football and giving them a chance to exercise that area. Now, uh, with Sims out, you know they're playing with Toby Williams all day long, but they've been playing very well against the run. I expect them to continue. Bomber, top of your screen, out to the right. And on the other side, Denard. Again, the handoff this time, Dickerson. Nice move, Eric Dickerson. For the first down, Ray Claiborne on the stop. Ooh, was that a nice run? He picked up 14 on the play. Okay, we've seen him in a position where he's been really pretty well curtailed all afternoon. Now, he makes three moves that you can't teach all of which are change of direction moves to give himself a little hole and a first down. Claiborne makes a nice tackle. It's very difficult. One-on-one -on -one in the open field to get, a, to get a guy like Dickerson down. And he has just passed Earl Campbell's 1979 total of 1,697 yards. Now the sixth highest single season total in NFL history. Dickerson has rushed for 1,706 yards. Kemp looking to throw for the third time. Again goes short. David Hill and Hill is uh, swarmed under at the 35 combination of Roland James and uh, Clayton Wysoon getting back to Dickerson his sights now set on OJ Simpson's 1975 total uh, better than 1800 yards 1817 for the season I'm sure his sights right now are set on the goal line today here in Anaheim because he knows that he's got to carry the load right now and get them back into this ball game seven points down they're trying to maintain their lead the 49ers have already won, so their backs are up against it. Second down and nine. At the New England 34-yard line. And here's Dickerson. For the first down, he found the marker. And ran it out. Picked up 13 more, and he's just beginning to heat up. Right, his offensive line is starting to get a piece of everybody. I, I, you get the feeling when those great backs are running the football, the offensive linemen feel, hey, I'm not going to be the guy that breaks down. They're all starting to pick up their play. They're getting a piece of all the Patriot linemen. He made this run on his own athletic ability. It was closed at the point of attack, but he took it to the outside. When he did so, the pursuit had to catch him. They couldn't. The sideline finally did. Eric Dickerson, who fought off the flu this week, has practiced several days. A rookie from SMU beginning to turn it on in the second half. And here is Kemp throwing for the end zone. Touchdown! Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Preston Denard out of bounds. Covered by Ray Claiborne. 
And when you take a look at a play like this, Jeff Kemp made the throw at the right time. He's made every throw he's been asked to make at the right time. He goes in, it's his first action, really uh, of any of any uh, magnitude all year long, comes in for an in injured Ferragamo, stands there, throws the ball right on the break. Denard makes a fine catch, but he had Claiborne turned around, but by a foot, they had six. Crowd reacting as they saw the replay. But uh, there's no question on the court. Were they booing Denard? Did they think he should have stayed in? Because he was out. They saw, obviously, a hazy replay. Mm -hmm. Because there's no question about the call. We're midway through the third quarter. And this is Dickerson trying to pull away. Andre Tippett would not let go. Right here, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KTTC Television 10. Rochester. Marv Albert with John Brody from Anaheim, California, England. New England leading the uh, Los Angeles Rams by the score of 14-7. Here's another look at that uh, well, pass thrown by Kemp. The concern that any fan would have is that, hey, the defensive back knocked Denard out of bounds and that that momentum carried him beyond the stripe, and that's a judgment called by the official. He didn't see it that way, and uh, I wouldn't have called it that way either. And a third down play. 11th play of this drive. That's Farmer in motion. And Kemp throwing for Farmer. And the first down. A 15-yard pass play. And Jeff Kemp has run this club very well. You know, there are certain things that you just expect of people. And when he went in at quarterback, the one thing I expected him to be able to do is play as well as he's capable of playing. Where he's thrown the ball is exactly where it should have been thrown. That was a very difficult throw to make. Now, he doesn't have to see over those linemen when he's throwing the ball to the outside, but his timing is excellent. It's a zone defense. You can see Raymond Claiborne is not quite over there, number 26. George Farmer comes up with another big catch, and uh, they've got it inside the 10. It was Farmer hooking up with Farragamo in the first quarter on a 46-yard touchdown pass play. Right now, sets up a first and goal at the six. And the mix up, Kemp slipped <laughs> and handed to Dickerson, who really did not have a shot. Andre Tippett all over. I get the feeling that there was a miss, a mix-up on the call itself because the lineman didn't get off the line of scrimmage properly. He got the ball, fumbled it just a little. I think Kent Hill maybe got a shoulder on him trying to pull and help Dickerson. Anyway, that play was going nowhere from the time it was snapped. How many times have we seen number 56 in on the tackle today? Andre Tippett favoring the left ankle, and he is making it back from the left ankle sprain suffered against the Jets uh, two weeks back, which inserted Larry McGrew into the uh, starting line of this. Uh, Vince Ferragamo still trying to shake it off. Well, he's trying to grip the football. If he can get a grip on the ball and the numbness allows him to throw it with any sort of touch, I'm sure you'll see him back in there, but they're not doing too bad with number nine. And this is play number 13 on this drive. And number nine, Jeff Kemp is four for five, 38 yards. Gives it to Dickerson. It's cut inside the five. Larry McGrew, who came on for Tippett on the stop. Good block from the left guard, Kent Hill. Okay, so off, but now they're in a third and five. Dickerson picks up five more yards than was actually available on this play, just through good sheer putting your head down and movement. The third down and five doesn't give a doesn't give an offense much uh, much option. I think they'll have to throw it right here, and they need seven points to tie it up. Well, Doug Smith leads leads the club to the line. Crowd urging the Rams on. Third and goal at the five. And Dickerson, Bobber with the block. Dickerson cutting the other way. And let's see. They did not give it to him. No indication. Julius Adams closing the hole. Fourth down play. I'm there, I go for it. I'll tell you why. And I'll bet John Robinson goes for it too because they need seven points. Three would come and let everybody's got a let down. Even if they don't make it, they're playing at home. It'll be very difficult for New England to get out of that hole. All right, this is another sheer number 29 makes the yardage. He's out here. He looks like he's going to be trapped about the six yard line, but he cuts back again underneath, underneath the linebacker flow. Ends up just short of the goal line. 
And the Rams have called for time. Jeff Kemp over to the sideline. New England coach Ron Meyer pondering the situation as Patriots leading the Rams by the score 14-7. Four minutes and 14 seconds left. Third quarter. Well, the New England Patriots now facing a goal line situation. They have succeeded four times in this situation, but in Foxborough. That's right. It makes it, it makes a difference, but they, they couldn't have a more important one than they have right now. Seven-point lead away from home. Being, they've capitalized on every situation they could. I think two nines going to get it, though. All right, fourth and goal. is 2-9 Eric Dickerson I don't know I don't see any arms going up in the air Patriots indicating no no is correct the Patriots holding off Dickerson and the Rams Steve Nelson and Clayton Wysoon able to move to the hole and uh, stack up Dickerson and the reason they're able to move to the hole is number 98 Dennis Owens the nose tackle the man we've seen a little of all day now look they're playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage this time it's the first time in a short yarded situation that the Rams have been stood up that's five for for New England their first one away from home you can take as many angles as you want and you're going to see real good penetration by the New England defense 15 plays 79 yards for no points and a, a drive that consumes seven and a half minutes, and it comes up empty. The second guessers all say, why doesn't he go over the top? The reason being here is that number 57, Steve Nelson, has already beat him to it. He's going over the top anticipating. He just couldn't quite get that extra foot. So the Patriots able to hold off the Rams. Four minutes remaining third quarter. Patriots lead it by the score of 14-7. Collins and Tatupu, the running back, Tony Collins. Picked up the yard on the play, George Andrews. Outside linebacker from the right, able to cut him off. And this is where the Rams may find out if they really are a contending team because they've played well all year. This is a very critical position for them. Now, their defense has to suck it up and stop the Patriots inside the 10-yard line without giving them a first down. And uh, it's hard to do when you think you're going to score a touchdown, but the good defense is good. Second and nine from the two-yard line. Patriots in the eye. Again, the second back, Collins. Rick Meisner, the nose tackle, three-year pro out of Pittsburgh, on the stop. You know, so many people look at a football field, it doesn't seem very far, but I'll tell you, to the quarterbacks and the linemen and the backs, see that other post at the other end? It looks like it's about three cities away. <laughs> All right, that's from our end zone view, and uh, that is what Tony Eason is looking at right now. Third down and eight from the three. And again, it's Collins making the turn, but the Rams able to have him in with a good tackle. Okay, because they had it, because they went for it on fourth down and a foot and a half, they're going to have another opportunity for good field, for field position. You see Jack Youngblood, his group sucked it up, kept them from getting a first down. Now the Patriots have to punt, even though that's their strongest suit. Uh, they better do it well this time. So Rich Camarillo, who has had success punting from his end zone, this is the fourth time that'll punt from out of his end zone, and he's averaged 50 yards per punt in this situation. And again, a, a good look uh, from the angle from the end zone. Camarillo punting for the seventh time this afternoon, so his friends and relatives certainly uh, seeing a lot of Rich uh, here in Anaheim. This is Leroy Irvin. And he fumbles! Recovered by the Patriots. Ed Reynolds, the backup linebacker, on the recovery. Let me tell you, and, that, and if anybody says he always kicks them good when he's in the, in the trouble, they're wrong because he gave that run back team a chance to move all the way down the field inside the 20-yard line. We see Irvin, first string cornerback. Now they've got him in a critical situation, so they double him up as a punt returner. Catches the ball on the dead run and makes a good looking return. But let's let's go of it at a very critical time. 
The Patriots recover, and they have been opportunistic today. And a break. That punt was only 37 yards. 15-yard return. Irvin, in past years, one of the excellent punt return men uh, in the NFL, but he gives it back. First down for New England at the 26-yard line. And Eason keeps it on the ground. It's Jeff Dupu with a short pickup, Carl Eckern. Seventh season out of San Jose State, the L.A. Rams' leading tackler, stopping to Tupu. And we're down to a minute and a half left in this third quarter. Patriots lead it by the score of 14-7. It was uh, Ferragamo to Farmer on a 46-yard pass play in the first quarter. And after Eason engineered the good drive to Tupu, uh, brought one home, and he did it again for a 14-7 New England lead. Second down and seven. At the New England 29-yard line. That's the tight end, Dawson. And Eason off the roll. Can't find anyone. Now he does. And completes. Stanley Morgan stopped by Nolan Cromwell. And a very nifty move by the rookie, Tony Eason. You made a very... Uh, you made a... An exposing statement there, Marv. You said he can't find anyone, and there, no, there was no one open originally. But it's only the outstanding quarterbacks that, when they're on the roll to the right, have the ability to look back behind them. And if you look at the flow, he's catching, he's catching Stanley Morgan as he's going right through the defense there, puts the ball where it has to be thrown. Morgan's with him all the way, and they pick up a big play and a first down. It's a 35-yard gain. Stefan starring now to the left. Top of your screen, Morgan to the right, and it's Tatupu. Able to break a tackle, Mosi Tatupu. For the first down, Johnny Johnson, Leroy Irvin combining, but a 13-yard pickup for this man. Yes, sir, when you throw the ball down the field, sometimes your running backs have a, find a few more holes. The linebackers are a little more concerned with their deep drops, and as Tatupu gets through the line of scrimmage, you see Carl Ecker, number 55, trying to make chase, but not before he picks up a first down. And that is the end of the third quarter here in Anaheim. The Patriots battling for a wild card playoff spot. Lead at 14-7. We'll be back reopened some stitches on his throwing hand it left him unable to, to continue they put a number on there and he's trying to find out if he's got enough field to go back in the ball game but right now it's the defense's chore and we're just underway in this fourth quarter first down for the Patriots at the Ram 22 Eason with the uh, the nice pass again Leroy Irvin on the coverage of Derek Ramsey, Eason pumping, looked right, and then went left, and uh, able to make the decision, which picks up 13. What happened is he was trying to get the short out, but they've got an automatic call. When you pull it back, here goes Stanley Morgan down the field, and he actually was open. Eason didn't think so, came off to, uh, to Derek Ramsey and made a superb play of it. It's, that's what happens when you've been there for almost a year. Now you're, you're in, your primary target isn't open. You go to your secondary receiver, and it becomes more second nature to do so. And we've seen, we've seen uh, Eason do it on four or five occasions today and very well. What a difference for the rookie, Tony Eason. Ineffective against the Jets two weeks ago, 13 for 27. In the snow last week, threw only 10 passes, completed three. But doing it today, now going to the ground. And a good second effort by Tatupu. I'll tell you, the left side of that offensive line, that's the third time we've seen it in this drive. It's not any surprise if you take a look at the people. Number 73, John Hanna, maybe the best guard that's played this game in the last 10 years. Brian Holloway, a fourth or fifth year man out of Stanford that's a tackle that's come on very strong. And he, those two are, are putting some holes on you. And Mosi doing it again today, coming off the career high, 128 yards last week against New Orleans. Second and goal, down at the one. Collins and Tatupu are the running backs. And the Patriots looking to put some daylight between them and the Rams, but a fumble! And picked up by Nolan Cromwell. The Rams recover! Nolan Cromwell's been the man every time they need something to happen. He picked off that interception in the first half to keep from scoring a touchdown. Now he picks up a fumble. Missed handoff between center and quarterback. Eason makes a game try for it. But if that ball's on the ground very long and it's a blitz situation, number 21, look at the left corner of your picture. When that ball hits the ground, he's like a hawk. And it's been a very slippery football. Three turnovers by the Patriots, five by the Rams, and the Rams take over. He never got the ball clean. 
So we're opening minute, fourth quarter. It'll be Los Angeles to the offense again. They're trailing 14 seconds. Same thing happened on this side. The Patriots got the ball. He fumbled six yards forward, and none of the offensive linemen could get toward the ball. And it's Clayton Wysoon in what has become the bizarre, picking up another turnover. Well, you see, Jeff Kemp never got the ball clean. It was a left, it was a left, the, the left-handed center. He's looking for the ball. The ball has already gone, all right? He doesn't have it. The left, the right uh, guard, Dennis Herrick, kicked the ball forward about six yards, and the Patriots recovered. This is a game that uh, has seen earlier uh, two fumbles within 15 seconds. Well, it's 6-3. to three. The Rams are leading in turnovers, and that's why they're not ahead on the scoreboard. Sixth turnover, five on fumbles, and here are the Patriots taking over. Osi Tatupu, who has been protecting the football. Jim Collins on the tackle. But while he's doing so, he's still picking up valuable yards. This guy's made some holes where there weren't any a few times. And when you do that, then your offensive lineman on occasion will help you also. And a look at the uh, third quarter statistics. The Rams have had the ball quite a bit, but uh, they haven't done what they'd like with it. Second down and seven. And here is Tatupu. Big hole. And he has got it again. His third touchdown of the day. And that ties a New England Patriot franchise record. He goes into the books alongside Tony Collins and Sam Bam Cunningham for three touchdowns in one game. Yes, sir, and that's pretty good company. But this man is so good inside the 15-yard line, he's broken tackle after tackle. He almost scored the last time they had the ball, was stopped at the one-foot line. He was not going to be denied this time. He's done it from four, from five, and now from seven. And I think the folks at WHDH Radio in Boston will be playing that song tonight <laughs> several times. That may catch on. All right, Zendejas puts it through, so he is perfect in this, his first game of the National Football League. Mosi Tatupu, yes. <laughs> With his third of the day, and the Patriots lead it 21 to 7. And this is one of them, the New England Patriots in front of the Los Angeles Rams by the score of 21-7 with two and a half minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. This is Barry Redden on the return. And he bowls his way up near the 30-yard line, a 23-yard return by last year's number one draft pick out of Richmond, Barry Redden stopped by Johnny Rembert. You know, the special teams have been so important for the Rams all year, and Gil Haskell, the man who's coaching them, has had these fellas on their, on their best behavior in critical games, and they need a turnover now because number 30, Mosi Tatupu, has all but taken this game out of reach. When you get a man hot like he's been the last two weeks, you give him the ball, he'll just keep grinding it out on you unless they get some turnovers. And he is now the uh, primary running back. He is getting the attention. It is now Tony Collins alongside Mosi Tatupu, the way Mosi has been going. Vince Ferragamo is back at quarterback and was not well received by the crowd. Fires it up, incomplete, intended for George Farmer, covered by the free safety, Rick Sanford. We'll go to the scores in a second, but his motion has changed. He, can, he does not have a lot of touch. All you have to do is been able to, to have watched him previously. As Washington, it just continues on, grinding away whether it's Dallas or whoever. And here's, uh, well, I don't know if anything could be uh, called a surprise because we've seen quite a bit of Denver uh, this year, and they have had a light schedule. They're up and down, but they're getting blasted today by uh, Baltimore, San Diego, and Kansas City in a, a game of no significance. And how about St. Louis leading uh, the L.A. Raiders? All right, here's Dickerson trying to stiff arm. It's out to the 32, the left defensive end, uh, Toby Williams, on the stop. Case of the Raiders, of course, uh, cannot, cannot please uh, Tom Flores and certainly Al Davis, but uh, they've clinched the division and uh, may be tough to get up today. Well, it may be a little tough to get up, and I'm sure they did a little celebrating last night. But uh, Really, the Raiders? But they come to play every day, and I, <laughs> I think that's the unique thing that uh, has held true over the years with the Raiders, and I think they, they are the class of, of the uh, AFC. 
And they close out next Sunday against the uh, San Diego Chargers, another game that has uh, no meaning. As they look to the playoffs, Ferragamo firing one, intended for Farmer way off the mark. Farmer well covered by Claiborne. I like to, you know, I mentioned something about his motion earlier. Now, he threw this ball long, and it's easy to throw a ball a long way, but if you're going to throw it long, you still have to have touch, and he's a great long thrower, but watch his elbow. He doesn't get his elbow up very high. He usually does. He's usually a real high-throwing sort of a ball. This time, it looks like he's cradling the ball. He really doesn't have the same touch he normally does. He's trying to go uh, because he figures it's their only chance, but it's, a, it's an uphill go. And now John Misko. Awaiting the snap. And Boots from inside his 20-yard line. A little confusion there. Look out. Ricky Smith was calling for it, and he misjudged it. It actually went short. And then his uh, teammates uh, try to help out. Well, Roland James is the man that was helping out. Number 38, he's been helping out all day long. We watched Ricky Smith trying to get to the ball. He's rolling his teammate off. Rick Sanford tries to get the ball. But look at number 38. He's the man that's been making the big plays when they need him all day long. Short punt by Misko, only 29 yards, and the Patriots able to cover it up, preventing yet another turnover. <laughs> you enjoy that stuff, huh? <laughs> nice between the legs spike. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Come on, John. Four minutes gone by in this uh, fourth quarter. Marv Albert with John Brody, and here is Tony Collins. And Collins unleashing. Nolan Cromwell able to run him down along with Eric Harris. An 18-yard run by Collins. It's definitely going to take some sort of a turnaround right now, some sort of a big break by the special teams or an interception or a fumbled snap from center. There have been some turnovers today, but right now, if you're a Ram fan, you better pray for one. Tony Eason has had an exceptional day, his best day in the National Football League. Eason, the fourth of six quarterbacks taken in the first round. The others were John Elway, Todd Blackledge, and Jim Kelly, who signed uh, in the USFL. A little mix up there. Collins changes direction. And uh, brought down by Cromwell, number 21. You know, so, some guys some guys never quit. And uh, Nolan Cromwell may may well be as good a, as good a safety man as there has been in this game for, for a few years. He just stays with the play the whole way. As soon as the play changes direction, Collins thinks he might have outrun the pursuit. There's number 21. Three-time Pro Bowl man. He's played well recently, struggled earlier in the year, and the Rams have done quite a bit of uh, shuffling in the secondary. In fact, uh, Cromwell moved over from free safety. It's a second and nine at the Los Angeles 43-yard uh, line. And the play action. And Eason fires. It's deflected and hauled in by Morgan. Stanley Morgan following the ball very well. Well, I mentioned that uh, Stanley Morgan was not having the kind of year we've, we've come to expect of him, but he certainly had the kind of game today that he's uh, built a reputation for. Tony Easton is playing the way I thought he could, and I'm, I'm very happy that the, that the Patriots are giving him an opportunity to ex ex expose his wares. He's throwing the ball where he has to. That was a pretty good deflection, actually, by the linebacker, but Morgan comes down with it in the tight crowd. And Stanley, in doing so, has uh, broken a Patriots single-season record for receptions, breaking the record that was held by a fellow by the name of Reggie Rucker. Collins on the move, stopped by Reggie Duss. Reggie Rucker, now a NBC color commentator, wiped out of the record books of the, uh, <laughs> of the New England Patriots. Just the way, it's just the way it goes. Yes, you can relate to that. Yeah, I just didn't have much in them to start with. Oh, no, you're being unusually modest, John. You're Back still in the there. All right, second and nine at the 27. Eight minutes and 45 seconds left. Fourth quarter, Patriots 21 of the Rams 7. And again to the ground, it's Collins inside the 25-yard line. Three touchdowns by Mosi Tatupu. The Rams getting on the board as Ferragamo hooked up with Farmer for a 46-yard pass play in the first quarter. But uh, the Patriots have come from behind, and there's uh, Collins passing by the 1,000-yard uh, mark for the first time in his career. Well, 
you know, when you see a man running this way, they're picking up more yardage now, and, and this is a big run, uh, just another run, but it, it, it illustrates a big year for Tony Collins, over 1,000 yards. But right now it's easier for those running backs to pick up yards because the Rams are trying to grab the football, and you miss a lot of tackles trying to do that. They've got to come up with a big play, and sometimes they'll give you a few extra yards. So congratulations to Tony Collins and his third season out of East Carolina, the first Patriot to go over the 1,000-yard mark since Sam Cunningham did it back in 1977. Well, we've been discussing uh, many of the individual records, uh, club records, and season <laughs> oh, records, but the uh, drum beater for the New England Patriots, uh, Tom Moose Hoffman, has put together a unique set of records involving play-by-play -play announcers for NBC, and uh, this details the record while the announcers have done New England Patriot games. For example, when Bob Costas and Bob Trumpy have handled the Patriots, they have won twice, have not been beaten. Where are we on this list, uh, John? Oh, that may that may explain why I've been a little critical of their offense. Oh, uh, John Brody 0-3 while announcing Patriot games. And uh, Phil Stone and I are uh, right in the pack at the bottom at 0-2. Uh, it's been a rough season. Well, I'll tell you. For us. I think we're going to break the, the ice here because uh, if they don't look like a winner today, I have never seen them one. And New England looking to make it 8-7 and seven and stay alive in their wild card quest. Right now, third down and five. And Eason throwing off balance. Intended for Clarence Weathers. Vince Newsom on the coverage. Well, Clarence is trying to make one of those uh, backhanded, one-handed catches. Uh, Eason's getting good pressure. This is the kind of ball that I think later in his career he won't try to make because he was throwing it off balance. It was a perfect opportunity for the Rams to possibly pick off an errant throw. It ended up a drop, but uh, when they look at the films, I think he'll uh, think better of that. And now, a 41-yard attempt by the rookie Joaquin Zendejas, his first field goal attempt in the NFL, local product out of Chino, California, who had a, a look-see in the San Diego Charger camp earlier. And this one is no good. So Zendejas, who has hit three out of three, and the extra point department off the mark, trying from 41 yards away. 7.49 left, fourth quarter. The score remains New England 21. Rams haven't shown any signs of putting together any offense in the second half, and Ferragamo's not in the best of condition. And he fires one and able to complete to George Farmer, Ronnie Lippett. On the coverage, a 16 yard pass play. All right, we're set for an upstate. Update. Let's go back to our studios in New York. We're set to go upstate. <laughs> and now let's go to the update. All right, first down at the 39, and Ferragamo throwing deep. George Palmer involved with Ronnie Lippett. And I, I, yeah, I think that's an offensive, uh, uh, one of those offensive calls. Ronnie Lippett played this ball about as well as a defender can play it. Now, people have talked about the defensive backs having all the worst of it in this game in the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, when you play it this well, sometimes you just ought to be rewarded. Here's 42. Ronnie Lippett going down the field with George Farmer. Farmer's on the outside shoulder. The ball's thrown inside. Now, what Lippett does is he keeps Farmer from being able to get inside, but at the same time giving himself an opportunity to pick it off. The, the play, I think, was correctly called, and Lippett made a beauty. The only thing he forgot to do was hang on to the ball once he made it. And we'll hear the uh, official decision from the referee, Red Cashin. Offensive pass interference, number 84, still first down. So it is against the receiver, George Farmer, out of Southern University in his second season of the NFL. Okay, look at his left hand. It works both ways, you know. Usually you'll see a defender in this position on the ball. This time you see an offensive player. The call works both ways. Only the uh, third penalty called on the Rams, just two on the Patriots. So it's uh, been a very uh, low-key day for the officials. And the completion to uh, Dickerson, but well covered by Don Blackman. He's had a very 
a fine ball game. Don Blackman, third season out of Tulsa. You know, these fellows are really playing about as well as they can play defensively at this time of the year. We mentioned they had, for the last 10 games, played very well. Uh, they haven't been the, they haven't had the, the good turnovers by their special teams, and their offense has been almost non-existent. But this group has held them together throughout the year. Short setup, and Preston Denard, short of the first down. Fred Marion, the extra defensive back in the lineup, uh, ran him out. There's Denard, who will need some repairs. So it'll be a third down and eight. The ball across the 40-yard line. Six and a half remaining in this fourth quarter as you check out the uh, scoreboard and look at the earlier games. We'll continue with uh, the scoreboard rundown. Bergamo is hammered down by Andre Tippett. So Tippett was uh, forced out, looked to be a, an ankle again earlier, right back in it, and has played well since uh, making his return. Hey, it's been Lippet, Tippet, uh, James and Wysoon. It sounds like a brokerage firm, but these guys have been all over the field all day long. Tippett we saw go out with an ankle injury earlier. It didn't seem to last too long. He's back in there right in Ferragamo's face, and it's all uphill now. And the Rams' offensive line has been the best in the NFL this season going into today, allowing only 18 sacks. Uh, that is low in the league. Ricky Smith hanging right in across the 35-yard uh, line, a 34-yard punt by Misko, and back to the scoreboard final. Chicago knocking off Minnesota 19-13. And Detroit suffering a blow. Cincinnati Bengals, as you mentioned, have uh, been playing real tough. And they beat the Lions. Seattle over the Giants at Giants Stadium. New Orleans over Philadelphia, 20-17. to And now fourth quarter, the Redskins in front of the Cowboys, 28-10. to First down for New England. At the 36-yard line, they lead the Rams by the score of 21 to 7. Mosi Tatufu with nowhere to go. Mel Owens, the outside linebacker on the left, making the stop. In the fourth quarter, the Colts lead the Broncos 19 to 7. And San Diego and Kansas City just uh, finishing out the season. 38-31 shootout. Now they're the Cardinals over the Raiders. Boy, it was 24-7 to in that game at one time, so... Uh... Yeah, that is the story right here. Second down at 11. Tatupu had a flag down as he crosses the 40-yard uh, line. Leroy Irvin had the rats on Mosey. Looking back at this New England season, the two losses, according to the Patriots, that really hurt... A home and home at the hands of the Baltimore Colts. So. Yeah, but I think every team can look back and find a situation similar to that. I think the important thing is to look forward. And if these guys happen to win their next two ball games, they could find themselves in the playoffs. And starting the season, I don't think very many people predicted that sort of a finish. They're playing as well right now as they can play. And they've got a young quarterback that they're giving an opportunity to play some, throw the ball down the field, and he's coming on. And uh, so they could finish pretty strong. Holding during the run, number 88 on the offense, still second down. All right, the hold on the tight end, Derek Ramsey. You just saw Jeff Kemp warming up once again and uh, might be coming on for Vince uh, Ferragamo. Patriots finish up next week at Seattle and the Rams at New Orleans. It looks like these two, the Patriots and Seattle, could be playing for that, uh, that final spot. Eason again on the roll. Derek Ramsey. Jim Collins ran him out. Right now we're set for another update. So let's go to our studios in New York. Thank you, Marv. The Broncos have finally scored. It's now 19-7 Baltimore, but this touchdown should not have counted. Watch it. It's Elway to Clint Sampson. There's one step there. The second step is out of bounds. That should have been no score, but they gave it to him anyway. Back to you, Marv. This week, it was Elway and fellow rookie Clint Sampson hooking up twice. John Elway had his biggest day in the National Football League. 5-15 remaining in this fourth quarter. 
And the Patriots with a 21-7 lead. Third down and four. And Eason is all down. <laughs> George Andrews, bet, Reggie Doss combining. I bet when they call that play, Eason wished they'd call it off. Because when you call a quarterback draw with your team leading by 14, and you're the only quarterback in, on the group, yeah. that quarterback draw looks a whole lot less attractive. Well, the Rams, with a loss here today, drop back behind the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers winning earlier, so they are now nine up and six down. And the Rams will drop to eight and seven unless there is a miraculous turn over these uh, final four and a half minutes. And I've seen more miraculous turns in this game. Here's Camarillo. And Ellis on the return. Up down at the 25-yard line. A 38-yard punt by Rich Camarillo. And a five-yard return. Mark Hewitt on the tackle of Ellis. And Jeff Kemp. A rookie from, I should say, three-year man from Dartmouth. Back in replacing Vince Ferragamo. Well, you can bet he's going to he's going to air it out some. They've still got a chance, and uh, this kid played very well in his first real opportunity to show people what he could do in a Ram uniform. You know, he's I think he's been something like four for twelve before he got into this today's game, but he's thrown the ball where he should throw it, he's thrown it when he should throw it. And I think if they have any chance, they have to let him play. Round the club well. Good series, although the Patriot goal line stand uh, prevented uh, the Rams from putting any points on the board. That is moving in motion. And here is Kemp. Line driving it for Farmer. And a first down. Claiborne on the tackle. A 15-yard pass play. Rams in a hurry up. We're down just under four minutes left now in this fourth quarter. Patriots lead it 21-7. Three touchdowns for Mosi Tatupu. It's been a game of turnovers both ways. And let's see, nearly picked off. Ronnie Lippett diving in front of Preston Denard. Well, that Ronnie Lippett's played some kind of football game, and he lulls a quarterback to sleep, and then he looks like he's staying a whole lot farther off the receiver than he actually is. And Jeff Kemp saw the reaction of Lippett right as he went to throw the ball. It made the proper throw. Threw it incomplete. Get back in the huddle. Let's regroup. And it's been an outstanding uh, defensive effort here by uh, the Patriots. The secondary, Lippitt, James, Sanford, Claiborne. Right now, they go with uh, Toby Williams, Dennis Owens, Julius Adams up front. McGrew, Nelson, Wysoon, Blackman are the linebackers. And here's Kemp in trouble. Andre Tippett. And uh, some extracurricular activity. Well, I can quickly broken up. I can understand that, but I think the uh, the credit for that play has to go to the secondary of the Patriots because there was nobody open. He had plenty of time to throw, couldn't find an open receiver. So it'll be a third down and 13. And here is Kemp. The completion this time Henry Ellert. Roland James, the uh, strong safety on the stop. 18 yard pass play. And you can see why number 15 is out of the lineup. He just could not get a grip on the ball. When you can't do that, you're not much used to a club if you're the quarterback. He tried gamely, but uh, really wasn't effective. First down at the New England 44. Camp with time <laughs> and incomplete. Intended for George Farmer. Farmer has caught five for 107 yards, including the one Los Angeles touchdown, a 46-yard combination with Ferragamo in the first quarter. There's Farmer, ninth-round draft pick uh, last season, spent two years on the uh, injured reserve list. Kemp is now six for nine. 71 yards in all. A floating pass caught by Ellard. 
boy, he moves that ball fast. When he gets back and set, he's, that ball's ready to go. He doesn't have to have an extremely strong arm. He's got a very quick arm. And the ball doesn't get a, lo a high trajectory, but it's, it's out of there. Bang. This thing has a perfectly tight spiral, throws the ball about waist high. And he's been able to throw the ball to the sidelines. A lot of quarterbacks don't do that very well. I'd say that's his strong suit, firing the ball to the outside. It also gives him a chance to see his receivers a lot better throwing to the outside. He's done it well, and he has not given up, although many of the fans in the stadium have left. And we're just under three minutes remaining in this yeah. fourth quarter. And that is sack number three on the day by the Patriots, Don Blackman. Getting to the quarterback. That had to be a mistake. Either on Kemp's part or one of his or his offense's back, because nobody touched Blackman to the offside. You generally have somebody responsible to handle you. Uh, he came clean. Second about 20. And Kemp again with the sideline pattern for Farmer. Great play ball on the coverage. Fans don't feel that he's been given all he was entitled to on that play. And, and he th they thought he got out of bounds in time. And uh, actually, they called it dead before he did get out, so I have to agree with that. So the clock is running, and here's Kemp going the other side, and Neely picked off by Lippitt again, intended for Ellard. Well, he thinks he, he thought he'd had the ball. He's... <laughs> He's got some cramps in his calves. It's been a long day for these fellas. They've been on the field quite a bit. Now you see he comes off. Kemp's been effective throwing to the sideline. Went to the well once too often. Lucky to be able to regroup. Ronnie Lippitt, who has started every game in place of the uh, departed Mike Haynes. Just after uh, separating a shoulder in training camp. And uh, now it's uh, the left leg. You know we've got, pal, we've got fourth down and two and a half yards to go. Uh, this will be decision time for the Rams, and I, I'm sure they're very happy that Ronnie Lippitt took a little, aided them in a timeout. And here's Jeff Kemp over at the Los Angeles sideline. Coming up next Saturday night, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the Memphis State Tigers led by All-American Keith Lee going against the UCLA Bruins. That'll be live from Pauley Pavilion in what should be a, a terrific matchup of NCAA tournament contenders. Stay with us throughout the entire season for the best in college basketball right here on NBC Sports. UCLA was upset at home yesterday afternoon. Memphis State and UCLA next Saturday night right here on NBC. It's a fourth down and three. We're down at 2.13, remaining in the fourth quarter, and Kemp looking it over, and it's deflected. And their case just closed. Preston Denard, the intended receiver, and we'll get a look at that play from the eye view of the cornerback. It's the cornerback, not the quarterback. You can see Jeff Kemp. Actually, you know, you get blinded a lot if you're a quarterback or a linebacker or what have you, so you just have to get on the person you're responsible to cover. This ball, no, he didn't find anybody open. It hit the ground without touching the receiver, and uh, now it's just hold on to the ball, babe. And we have two minutes and eight seconds remaining on what has been a glorious afternoon here in California for the uh, New England Patriots. feeling that up in San Francisco they're going to be singing that uh, Mosi Tatupu song all night long. It gives them a, <laughs> a rekindled shot. And Tatupu stopped by Andrews. So, a second and nine upcoming. The two-minute warning has been provided, and right now, here's another one of those fantastic finishes. Right in that chase for a wild card spot on their way to the upset victory here over the Los Angeles Rams. And the Rams will fall a full game behind the San Francisco 49ers in the battle for top spot in the NFC West. Tatupu tripped up by Youngblood. So the Patriot just running the clock down. Now timeout has been called by the Rams. And this, a look at that wild card chase. 
Yeah, that, but that chase is going to change. Denver's going to end up being eight and seven also. And so uh, you take a look at the chance of New England. They're going to be eight and seven and right in the thick of it. And John, as we look back at this ball game, and there are a host of turnovers on uh, both sides. The big play, the fumble by Leroy Irvin on the punt return, the punt by uh, Camarillo. This after the Rams held the Patriots inside the five in the third quarter, and it eventually led to uh, Tatupu taking it in to make it 21-7. That's a huge play. Yeah, it was, but that one that Blackman picked off to start the second half wasn't too small. The fumble down by the goal line. I think there have been so, some very huge mistakes made by the Rams throughout the afternoon, and that's why they're 14 down. And yeah, that's the final score. The strange St. Louis Cardinals continue <laughs> a wacky season by knocking off the Raiders. And here is Tatupu, stopped by Jim Collins. I'd like to thank our statistician, Ross Schneiderman, our spotters today, Scott Cathcart, Daryl Huey, and uh, our auxiliary statistician, Tim Tuttle. Staff of thousands here in the booth. Thank you, guys. And terrific job done by the, uh, the camera crew from Burbank here on the West Coast. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC's football is Ted Nathanson. Today's game has been produced by David Neal, directed by Harry Coyle, our technical director, Ray Figelski, and associate director, Ray Manassi. You see the man scratching his head, and he he's not accustomed to losing tough ball games. And today, this one, you could say, was a combination of, of opportunism on, on New England's part and uh, fumbles and turnovers by the Rams. Uh, that hasn't been the way their season is going, but it's the way the day went. And here is Camarillo getting set to punt from his 11th. And punting to Ellard. And does not allow the return. 29-yard punt. Right now, we're set for another update. Let's go to Len Berman in New York. Thank you, Marv. Here come the Broncos again with five minutes left. They've pulled within five of Baltimore. John Elway swung it out to Jesse Miles. The rookie from LSU scored his first pro touchdown where it was 19-0. It's now 19-14. Marvin John. All right, back here in Anaheim, a minute and 38. I guess remaining that game isn't over. Huh? No, got to stay with it, John. Minute 38 left in this fourth quarter, and the Rams first down at their 46-yard line. And a fumble. Turnover seven. It's Clayton Wysoon gobbling it up. Well, that's just the way the afternoon's gone. We've mentioned it enough, I think, and you can see by the dejection on Jeff Kemp's face uh, that it's not the kind of day you'd expect to have. He is having a little problem getting the ball from center. That's happened three different occasions. They've lost two of them. When your offense is sputtering, can't even get the ball from center to quarterback. So there it is, turnover number seven by the L.A. Rams. You can read the lips <laughs> of uh, Jeff Kemp. He said, I don't believe this. Well, you better. And here are the Patriots taking over at the Ram 46-yard line. A minute 35, as you see. It's time left in the ball game, And they'll just run it down. And now a check of the scoreboard. And we'll start with the early games. Houston surprising Cleveland 34-27. San Francisco 49ers over Buffalo 23 to 10. Chicago beating Minnesota 19-13. These are all final scores. The earlier game, Cincinnati knocking off Detroit 17-9. And Seattle over the Giants 17-12. You see the clock running down here. We're under a minute left now. New Orleans beating Philadelphia 20 to 17. In the fourth quarter, Redskins doing it big over Dallas 31-10. Baltimore leading Denver 19-14 in the fourth. A 38-31 lead for San Diego over Kansas City in the fourth quarter. And St. Louis over the Raiders to bring us up to date.
And if anybody did much, uh, much studying, history would tell them that this is the first time that the Patriots have beaten an NFC team since 1980. So uh, who'd have thunk it? They beat the New Orleans Saints. That was their last win. And uh, they'll stay out here on the West Coast going up against Seattle next week. And uh, that will do it. An important victory for the Patriots, who are now 8-7. The Rams drop to 8-7 and seven as this game comes to a conclusion. The New England Patriots, on three touchdowns by Mosi Tatupu, have defeated the Los Angeles Rams 21-7. Marv Albert with John Brody saying so long from Anaheim. And now, stay tuned for NFL 83, coming up after these messages.